Hello, I'm Chris Putnam. I'm the co-author of Petrus Romanus, The Final Pope is Here, and the new book, Exo Vaticana, with my co-author, Tom Horn. Uh, today, I, I wanted to talk to you some about exoplanets. Now, this is the idea of planets that are outside of our solar system. And you know, this is where the, the prefix exo is put in front of the word Vaticana. So that's where I get the title for our book, Exo Vaticana. Um, there's a whole science now that's, that's really popular. It, it makes a lot of headlines on the internet about uh, astrobiology. Now this is the combination of the astronomy and biology, the study of life. So what is an exoplanet? So it's a, it's a planet outside of our solar system. And the thing that's really interesting about this is that in 1996, they found the very first one. So we didn't know about any extrasolar planets until 1996. Now today, if you get on the internet and look at articles, you'll see that they are estimating 100 billion exoplanets exist. Now that's a really big number, and they, they don't really know that. What they're doing is they've sent up a satellite called the Kepler Space Satellite, and it, it's looking for exoplanets. And uh, it does that by several different means, and we'll talk about that a little bit. But what they've done is they've, they've looked at a really small area of space, and they've seen that they've got a certain number of planets. And so from that, they just extrapolate that. Like if this number of planets is in this much space, you know, what would it mean if this much space was you know, characteristic of the whole uh, universe? And so then they get 100 billion is the number that they're throwing up right now. Now, just in our Milky Way galaxy, they think that we have millions, um, which is you know, a, an interesting extrapolation. Um, now, how did this, uh, this Kepler satellite, or how did the telescopes, how did they find these planets? Well, it's really important to realize that they don't even really see these planets in the way that you might think they do. What they're doing is they, they see a star. So you have a, a, a star way out in space, and they, they focus in on the light of that star. And then what they do is they, they keep a, a track of the luminosity, how bright that star is. And so what they look for is, you know, it has kind of a constant uh, level of luminosity, and then it, it drops a little bit. And then, you know, it's constant, it drops a little bit. So all they're doing is measuring the brightness of a star, and when they see it drop a little bit, that means that something orbited around it and blocked a little piece of it for just a short amount of time. And that's how they find exoplanets. They don't see the planet. All they're doing is seeing a star blink a little bit, meaning that something passed in front of it. And there's other ways that they, they detect them. One is, the other one's called the wobble method. And that just means they notice that the star moves a little bit. Now, when something orbits around, the gravitational forces actually pull on the star itself. So even our sun does this. It creates a little bit of gravitational wobble. So when they see a star wobbling a little bit, they infer that there's probably a large planet uh, orbiting around it. So these are the sorts of methods that they're using to find these exoplanets. Very few times do they actually see the planet itself. There's only been a couple that they've actually seen with their own eyes. So when you read these stories on the internet about these habitable exoplanets, uh, don't be you know, too impressed with the idea that these planets could be Earth-like. This is really a product of the scientific worldview. They really want these planets to be like Earth because they really want to find extraterrestrial life. They really believe in the possibility of extraterrestrial life. And you know, they've kind of assumed their conclusions. Uh, their conclusions is that life on Earth just evolved by natural means. They don't believe in divine creation. They don't accept our creator God. And uh, that idea is just kind of antithetical to the scientific worldview that dominates these sorts of programs. So, you know, you're looking at a worldview issue. Now, because they believe that the Earth is not special and that, you know, there's nothing special about human beings or the origin of life on Earth, th they assume that it will just happen on other planets in the same way because it's really not a big deal. And this is the sort of worldview that's driving this astrobiological project. So when you hear the word habitable zone or habitable planet, they don't know anything about it being habitable. What they're guessing is that they've determined just by gravitational forces and mathematical equations that that planet is a certain distance from that star. Now, if it's a certain distance, you know, comparable to the Earth, that means that it's possible 
that liquid water could exist on that planet. Doesn't mean the water's there. It means it's possible. It means it's the right temperature where the water wouldn't boil off like it would on Mercury or freeze like it would on Pluto. So it's in a zone. It's in an orbital zone, roughly like where Mars is to where Venus is, somewhere in between there. That's what they call the habitable zone or the Goldilocks zone, meaning it's not too hot, not too cold. So that's really all they mean when they say a habitable exoplanet. It doesn't mean that they know that there's life there. It doesn't mean they know there's water there. It just means that it's in a certain geographic area in comparison to its star. So don't be deceived by this idea that they're finding real Earth-like planets. Now, you know, our book Exo Vaticana talks about a lot of these issues, and it talks about aliens and things like that. You know, just to be really crystal clear, uh, we do not believe in space aliens. And, uh, you know, I devoted an entire chapter to astrobiology to explain these issues to you and why I think the Earth really is a very special place, uniquely suited to life, because our Creator God uh, created it that way to, to, for us to live. And I don't, you know, I think the issue of real aliens is probably an external issue, because when I read the scriptures, there is a philosophy of history from first advent to second advent. So the event that we're looking for is the return of Christ, not an alien exclosure event. It could be that God made other people, but I don't think they're going to come here and deceive us the way that the sorts of things that we hear from UFOs and the sorts of worldview that we see coming from astrobiology and these secular scientists. So we expect that if there is a claim to alien life, that it's going to be what we call the great deception or the strong delusion that the Apostle Paul warned us about in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. So just to help you process a lot of the, the media and the science that you're hearing about astrobiology, um, don't be taken in and believe that there really are space aliens out there at this point. There's really no evidence for that. Thank you.